Hello and welcome back to week five of the six week Home Barista Bootcamp and this week we are checking out cleaning. Now if you are watching this video you actually care about great espresso because uh, cleaning definitely isn't the sexiest topic but uh, it is so important for great coffee. So the aim of this video is to simply go through different aspects of cleaning your espresso machine and how regularly you should be doing those. And what we're going to do is go through things in order from how often you should be doing them. So let's start off with some cleaning that you should be doing from shot to shot. So when your extraction finishes, you're obviously going to take out your porta filter and knock that uh, coffee puck into the knock box. And the next thing you're going to do is take a dry cloth and wipe out that basket. What this is going to do is obviously get rid of any little bits of coffee that are still in there. We obviously don't want to be extracting those again. But it's also going to dry out the basket and that is super important for your next extraction. If your basket is a little bit wet or a little bit oily, what's going to happen is your next extraction, the water is not going to run evenly through the whole puck. It's going to slide down the sides of the basket and it's going to channel down the edges of that coffee puck. This will mean that your next extraction will be really unbalanced. So just by wiping that uh, basket dry, you're going to improve your coffee a lot. Also, if we have a look at the shower screen after that last extraction, you can see some little coffee grounds just sitting up on that shower screen. So we want to turn the group on for about two or three seconds and just rinse those grounds off before we start our next extraction. If you don't do that, then you're just going to have old coffee sitting up on the shower screen and from shot to shot, there's just going to be more and more and it's going to have a detrimental effect on your coffee really quickly. Now, when we dose for our next extraction, we always want to make sure after we've tamped that we wipe the top of the basket and wipe those lugs so that when we insert that porta filter, there's no coffee grounds ending up around the group. But there will be a little bit of coffee ground buildup anyway. So at the end of the day or at the end of each session, just take your group brush, uh, wet it a little bit, and then move it around the group to clear that out. You can also use a clean cloth just to give that a wipe in the group as well and make sure you got everything out. At the end of each session, it's also a really good idea just to uh, take the basket out of your porta filter and give both the basket and your porta filter a quick rinse and wipe as well. The oils can really quickly build up between the basket and the bottom of your porta filter there. So if you clean that out regularly, uh, it won't affect the flavor of your extractions. So the next thing that's really important for coffee is back flushing your espresso machine. Now in a cafe, we would do this every day, but for your home espresso machine, you probably just need to do it once a week. So what you need is a blind basket like this one. Uh, basically, there's no holes in the basket. So when you uh, lock it in and start the extraction, the water can't go through the holes at the bottom. So it pushes back up into the group head. And we're going to use a little bit of a espresso machine cleaner or sometimes it's called back flush cleaner. Uh, when you're using this, just use a little bit. So I like to think of the little fingernail about that much in the blind basket. So we lock this in with the cleaner and turn the machine on for about four or five seconds and then turn it off. What's happening is the water is mixed with that cleaner and gone back up into that group head. And so now I give it about 30 seconds for that cleaner to dissolve those coffee oils and coffee grinds. After you've waited that 30 seconds, you can start repeating that process. So turn it on, wait for about four or five seconds, turn it off. Turn it on, wait for about four or five seconds, turn it off. We want to do it five times in total. After we've done it those five times, we're going to take out the porta filter, uh, turn the machine on and give it about a five to 10 second rinse. Make sure that the water coming through is nice and clear. Once we've done that, we've got rid of almost all of the cleaner. So we're going to lock it back in and we're now going to repeat the process just with clean water. Now, depending on your machine, it might also be really easy to take off that shower screen. With some machines, there's a screw in the middle of the shower screen that you just gently unscrew. And with other machines like this E61 that I have, you just lever that shower screen off. Now, if you take the shower screen off, just be careful to make sure that you keep hold of all the parts. Uh, those screws can very easily go down the drain, so be careful with that. But once you've got the shower screen off, you can give the whole group head a really good wipe out and make sure it's nice and clean. And then you can put the shower screen back on. If you're back flushing weekly, you can do the shower screen weekly as well, or at home, you could probably just do the shower screen once a month. Lastly, but something that is massively important to your uh, home espresso machine is softened filtered water. A lot of home filters may filter out impurities, but you have to make sure that your water filter is softening the water as well, because hard water is very bad for espresso machines. If you use hard water in your espresso machine, then when that water heats up in your boiler, the calcium precipitates out of that water and coats your boiler and other parts of the machine in scale. This can really quickly have a detrimental effect on your espresso machine. So much so that some cafes that are in these areas 
we'll use an RO, so use reverse osmosis to completely purify the water and then remineralize it with minerals that are good for espresso. Now obviously you can't have an RO at home because it's a very expensive filtration system, but what you can use is third wave water. Third Wave Water is a company that makes mineral sachets that are perfect for coffee. So they have an espresso profile and a filter profile. And basically you take a little sachet, add it to distilled water, and then you end up with perfect water for coffee. If you're in Australia and you want to check that out, uh, I actually sell that on the website. So you can check it out at coffeefusion.com.au. The other thing that's really interesting is the Peak Water Filter. Uh, this is a water filter that is specifically designed for coffee. That has been a few years in the making and it's just getting released at the moment. So as soon as I can get my hands on one of those, I am going to get one and trial it. So if you want to keep an eye out for that episode and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you click subscribe because that is definitely a video I'll be posting as soon as I can get my hands on it. Now, if you have been using water that isn't softened, you can also fix things up by buying descaling solution, which you add to the tank and then run through your machine and let it soak for a long time and then clear it all out again. But it is a very long, tedious process. So if you can get better water going into the machine, your coffee will actually taste better, but uh, you'll have better longevity of your machine as well. So these things that we've just discussed are all of the main things that go into keeping your equipment clean. And believe me when I say keeping your equipment clean is so important for brewing great coffee. It's such a shame if you've gone to all this effort to make sure your shot is extracting really well, uh, you bought really great coffee, it's nice and fresh coffee, and then you ruin it because you don't keep your equipment clean. Now we are five weeks through the Home Barista Bootcamp, so if there's anything that you still aren't sure on, make sure you leave a comment in the comments below. Next week's video is going to be a summary of everything we've learned, but also a troubleshooting video. So anything that you haven't quite grasped, we really need to know in the comments below what your problems still are. And what I'll do is I'll take all of those comments and answer them in next week's video. If you've learned heaps from this Home Barista Bootcamp, the best thing you can do to support me is to buy your coffee through my website. You can sign up for a subscription and I'll send you a free sample pack, uh, basically three different coffees so you can try them against each other and learn uh, which of my coffees you like the most or just learn more about the spectrum of flavor in coffee. As I said, this is a free sample when you sign up for a subscription. So you just pay the $5 shipping and we'll get the journey started. Of course, you can also really support me by subscribing to the YouTube channel. And if you're still watching now, give the video a like because that helps YouTube to recommend this video to other coffee lovers like you. That's it for this one and I'll see you next week to summarize all your questions and finish up the six week Home Barista Bootcamp. Keep frothing.